الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حفظ في الله دعوة إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى for those who are active in da'wah or want to get into da'wah, definitely you have to realize because it is such a esteemed form of ibadah that of course it takes a class and it takes sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it takes adhering to the way of the Prophet sallallahu in da'wah. And Due to the harm that came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all the NBA that they all called the Tawheed, they tried to call their people to the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala away from worshipping false deities, as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Fi Kitabihi al Kareem. Walakad Ba'athna fi kulli ummatan rasulan. In Abdullah, which Tanibu Tagut, we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those things worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning Tagut, the false deities, whatever that may be, that people take as idols or gods. Meaning all the prophets and Ayyim after Salatu Salam had that same message. That they were commanded to to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone called a tawheed and away from and away from false deities and with that being the case of course they were going to anger the people in their societies and their peoples in general their tribes, their townships, their villages. And for later day prophets, latter day prophets, perhaps their nations. And make, incur a lot of wrath of the societies and the people. Because this is a threat to, uh, oftentimes a threat to the power structure. Because you find many people who want to be worshipped or they want to direct you to worship someone or something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know people make ta'zim of shirk so then that becomes a threat to them so then the people react and what made me reflect upon this is I'm just looking at and I've known this for years and I reflected upon it for years about the difficulty in given dawah and how political dawah has become. Political between the groups and sects and internal politics. And so I was thinking about a lot of the brothers, perhaps even sisters, who are going away to study, you know, students in Jama Islamia, uh, and all the other Islamic universities around the world and places to study. And I've known brothers who are, have graduated, you know, they're older graduates. They've graduated a long time ago, years and years and years, and they don't really do dawah. And one of the reasons is, is because of the nature of the politics. You know, some people, they just want to practice their Islam, which is understandable. It's absolutely understandable. Because probably, no doubt, everyone should not be out really actively giving dawah, meaning talking about issues of knowledge necessarily. Not everyone should be in that position. And even some people who have studied, they just might not have the desire uh, and they may not have the ability to convey the message. Then there's others who can convey the message very well, but they don't have the knowledge. And then there's some that can convey the message very well they have the knowledge, 
but they don't have the determination. It's just not really in their heart and they see the controversy, they see the fitness, so they don't want to do dawah. But really we need, in some form or fashion, more people calling to the book and the sunnah. But it is understandable. And what I would say is the beautiful advice of uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala when he mentioned in his book Asul uh, al-Thalatha and he mentions about the four principles uh, he he mentions innahu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al-ula al-ilm wa huwa ma'rifat Allah ma'rifat an-nabi ma'rifat al-din al-islam bi adalla al-thani ad-da'wat al-thani al-amal bi al-thalith ad-da'wat ilayhi And then he mentioned Surah Al-Asr as evidence for that. Uh, one thing I want to mention before mentioning why I mentioned that is the importance of proper istidlal and the importance of using evidence properly in its appropriate place. Because this is something very dangerous. Many of us fall into, we make mistakes so we may we use things that are not dalil as dalil or we understand the evidence in a way that no one before us no one who preceded us before uh, understood it you know men sabaka bi hadha qaw who preceded you in that statement in that understanding so that's why it's very important to have proper istidlal and so I wanted to mention that because here Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala in this when he he mentioned those four uh, things that everyone needs to know, those four principles, if you will, that he is, as is the menhaj of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, he is actually deriving those principles from the book and the Sunnah, which is different from the people of innovation and desires. Because the people of innovation and desires, what they do is a lot of times they start with a precept, they start with a belief or a premise. And then they rush to the Quran and the Sunnah to try to find evidence to support their belief and their ideology. And this is what you pretty much find almost across the board with, with the sects of innovation, to a greater or lesser extent, some more than others. Whereas Ahlul Sunnah, what distinguishes them from the other groups and sects is that they go to the book and the sunnah and they derive their aqidah from the Qur'an and the sunnah. They start with that because that has to do with revelation. That has to do with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and what his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. So that is the asas, that is the base. Then from there, we gain the understanding. That's where our aqidah and our beliefs and our, uh, our Islam comes from. Whereas others, they will come up with a theology even that often is really something, some concepts that they have, and then they'll rush to the Quran and the Sunnah to try to get uh, verses and evidences to support what they believe. And so then they make their own uh, unique istidlal, which differs from how the Salaf made istidlal. So going back to what Imam Muhammad said, so he mentioned out of those things, he said, you know, it's an obligation upon us to know things. Uh, the first is knowledge. And then he said, and it is knowing Allah and knowing uh, his prophet and knowing the religion of Islam with textual proofs. And that those are the questions of the grave. And then he said, uh, the second thing is. Al be to to practice that knowledge. We have to practice. And then he said the third thing is a dawah to ilay. So that the fact that you have knowledge and you're practicing, then you call people to that knowledge. Meaning you call people to what you know. You don't call people to that which you don't know. You don't call people above your level. You don't start speaking about Messiah that you really don't have a place speaking about. Okay, so you should kind of have an idea about what your level of knowledge is. A lot of times we do, but sometimes, sometimes we don't. Sometimes, plain and simple, we don't. And then he said, uh, the fourth thing is a sabra ala adhavi. And that's the importance of mentioning this, uh, is that dawah, it requires patience. 
it requires immense patience because you'll find people who hate you. You'll find people who want to harm, harm you physically, who will harm your uh, reputation. They seek to de uh, destroy your honor, in fact. People will speak about your family. They'll speak about your race. They will call you a disbeliever. They will call you an innovator in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of those things. And then you'll sometimes have controversy with your own brothers from Ahl Sunnah, own brothers and sisters, that they will constantly evaluate you for every single statement you make. And there are some people who rush. They're in a hurry to take you out from the fold of Ahl Sunnah. And some people are in a hurry to take you out of the fold of Islam. So you can understand why Du'at, why some people don't even want to get involved in da'wah. You can, I can completely understand that. And this is a travesty because, you know, we don't need things to deter people from learning and calling to the book and the sunnah. You know, it shouldn't be that the Muslims are going to be their worst enemies. But unfortunately, a lot of times this is the case. This is really honestly the case. You know, you don't have others, you don't have non-Muslims, you don't have Buddhists and others a lot of times attacking your honor and cursing you. In fact, a lot of times you might even find some of those people respect you more. And then you have people who are just, when I look at how people interact with uh, like our students of knowledge and how little respect a lot of these kids have. You know, really, they need a spanking. And I'm not lying. These kids, maybe they just didn't learn from their mothers and fathers on how to be respectful. You should be respectful in general to people. But you should even be more respectful to your elders. And you should have that same respect for people of knowledge. I mean, these people have stro strove in the religion. And I don't care how much knowledge they have, but the fact that they left, sacrificed, and they are teachers of Islam in some capacity. And they're teaching based on the book and the sunnah. You should give them respect. They should have some sort of respect. Okay. And different people have different levels of respect. <laughs> and so this is why, you know, it's very important, the tarbiya for the youth. You know, they need education on how to have proper manners. And we can empathize with those who don't want to even get involved in dawah. You know, they just want to live their lives. And no doubt that's a fitna, you know, the, all the time the shaitan whispers and people, you know, who wants to always be in controversy? And it shouldn't be that way. We know it's a steep path, but it should not be that every single thing you say, everyone has got an opinion and everyone wants to be, uh, you know, have their voice heard. And subhanAllah, so many people differ with the truth, wow, that's what's shameful. When you are out in the public sphere on these forums and on YouTube and whatever, and you are uh, commenting, you better make sure that what you're saying has a basis in the truth. Don't put yourself out there and, and make grievous mistakes. Because, you know, in fact, you could be rejecting Allah's religion. You could actually be falling into kufr. So this is, this is serious. And you should never rush to take people off the sunnah. Just because you learned a little bit, for example, the issue of, 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 of being, uh, making hajar of Ahl Bid'ah. Don't rush to take people who are known for sunnah. Years and years and years. Because of a mistake or what you perceive as a mistake or some issue. And you're rushing to take them off the sunnah. You have the right not to listen to them. That's fine. But every single minute out of your mouth, you've got something to say. Don't you know you're going to be held accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That, that's serious. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.